Today, I'm going to be building the best gaming PC that you can get for $800. Before this video starts, I would like to thank this video sponsor. If you're looking for an affordable and reliable place to get a copy of Windows, like Windows 11 or Windows 10, then CD Key Stash is the place to go. They've been a channel sponsor for a while, and if you use the code TLG15, you'll get 15% off your total order. Link is in the description. And so, the build starts off with a motherboard. The motherboard is what's going to tie up most of the components together, such as the CPU, GPU, RAM and SSD. I chose the MSI Pro B660M motherboard. It's a micro ATX motherboard, meaning it's a bit smaller than an ATX motherboard but perfect for our use case. I don't actually recommend getting this exact version. A better alternative is the Gigabyte B660M DS3H. It's only a couple bucks more and has better features. I only went with this MSI because I couldn't get the Gigabyte motherboard in my area. So after placing the motherboard on the box, let's install the processor. This is the i3 12100F. Now I know what you're thinking, an i3 for an $800 build. But for those of you who haven't been keeping up with Intel, this CPU packs some serious performance. This CPU is better than AMD's Ryzen 5 3600 as well as the Ryzen 5 5500 while being cheaper than both. So to install this, you want to align the corner of the CPU that has the small triangle with the similar marking on the CPU socket. You then want to push down and lift the lever up. And once you lift the lever up, then you gently want to place the CPU in its socket and then place the cover back over and firmly pull the lever back into its place. The plastic cover should pop back up and just like that, your CPU will be installed. Alright, up next is RAM. This is the Corsair Vengeance RGB RS. This is 16 gigs with a frequency of 3600 MHz. To install this, unlock these clips and simply line up the notch on the RAM with the notch on the RAM slot. It only goes in one way, so make sure it's in the correct way. And then simply push down firmly until it clicks into place. You want to repeat this process for the other RAM stick as well. Once the RAM is installed, the next step is storage. I went with a 1TB M.2 SSD from Mushkin. This plugs in directly into the motherboard in the M.2 slot. And to install this, I first need to screw the standoff which comes with the motherboard. Uh, I then can connect the SSD at an angle. And then I can simply slide this plastic piece over to hold the SSD down in place. We're almost ready to install this motherboard in our case, but before that, we're going to install the CPU cooler. This is the Deepcool AK400 performance cooler and it's a nice upgrade from the stock Intel cooler for only $35. This is what it looks like next to the Intel cooler for a size comparison. To install this, I'm going to be following the instructions straight off the manual. They are instructions for AMD and Intel, so I'll be following the Intel instructions. First up is installing this backplate behind the motherboard and then screwing the four standoffs that correspond to the bracket which will house this metal bracket. Before installing the cooler, I am going to unlatch the fan from the heatsink to make the installation a bit easier. The cooler already comes with thermal paste pre-applied, so I will not be applying any of my own. I carefully align the CPU cooler with the bracket and then screw it into place. I can then latch the fan back onto the heatsink and then finally connect the fan to the motherboard. Okay, next up let's get the case out of the box. The easiest way to do this is to place the box upside down and then simply slide the box out. So the case we have here is the Deepcool McCube 110. It's a micro ATX case coming in at a respectable price tag of $60. This case has a window style side panel, a PCU cover and plenty of room for airflow. I'm going to be removing this back exhaust fan that comes with the case because we're going to be installing our own case fans. These are the Deepcool FCB120 RGB fans. It comes in a pack of three and they can all be connected to each other so only one connection is needed to the motherboard. So I've installed two at the top and one at the back. Before we do install the motherboard, I'm quickly going to install the IO shield. 
by aligning it into place and then pressing down firmly until it clicks in. I can then take the motherboard by either holding it by the sides or by the CPU cooler and lower it into place so that the IO on the motherboard lines up with the IO shield like shown. You also want to make sure that the 9 holes on the motherboard lines up with the 9 standoffs that are installed in this case. Then take out 9 motherboard screws from the packet that came with the case and screw these into the standoffs to secure the motherboard in place. Next up is the power supply. This is the FSP Hydro K 500 Watt Bronze 80 Plus power supply. 500 watts is adequate for this build, especially since the i3 does not consume lots of power. So go ahead and get the power supply out of the box. You also want to remove the side panel from the case so you can route the power supply cables. So you want to install the power supply with the fan facing down like this and then take four screws that came with the power supply and screw them into place by matching the case holes with the power supply holes. Okay, now it's time to connect the power supply cables to the motherboard. So take the motherboard connector that looks like this and connect this to the corresponding spot on the motherboard. Then take the CPU connector that looks like this and connect that into its place. You can repeat these steps for the USB, audio, SATA and front panel connectors. I'm not going to be showing these steps because it does depend on the motherboard and case you have. After this, we're pretty much done. All we need to do is install our graphics card. But before we do that, I'm going to do a bit of cable management. This is nothing fancy, it's just tucking in all the unused cables. And also, don't forget to leave a 8-pin connector for our GPU. So, for the graphics card, we're using the AMD Radeon RX 6600. The one I have here is from XFX and it retails for around $200 and at this price point this is as good as it gets. You could spend a bit more and get the XT version but make no mistake this version can pretty much handle any title you throw at it. To install the graphics card remove these first two PCIe extension slots. These break off so you kind of have to bend these metal pieces off. You then want to grab the graphics card and align the notch on the graphics card with the notch on the PCIe slot. This is similar to how the RAM was installed, so once in place make sure to press down until the card is fully seated. We can then screw the graphics card into place with the provided thumb screw and then we can get the 8 pin PCIe cable that we routed earlier and plug that into the graphics card. With that done, the PC is successfully assembled. All that's left now is to install Windows and to enable XMP in their BIOS so that the RAM is running at its max speed. I'm not going to be going through the full Windows installation guide, but head over to our sponsor CDK Stash if you want to get a copy of Windows for a very affordable price. I'll end this video off with some gaming benchmarks, but if you enjoyed this video, be sure to drop a like and as always, thanks for watching.